Thousands marched in London yesterday to protest Brexit. Ostensibly a very serious issue. The debate over leaving the European Union is taking on the look of a very dark comedy. Watching it all is our Mark Phillips. Order! There's a time-honored tradition in Britain. Division! Division! <laughs> when things are looking really bad, take refuge in humor. And now we go live to the House of Commons for another edition of John Burko Makes the Funniest Noises. <laughs> they do a satirical radio comedy show at the BBC. Hello, I'm Steve Punts. And I'm Hugh Dennis. And lately they're finding it's hard to be funnier than the real thing. Unlock! Unlock! And leave my wife out of this! <laughs> What's funny about Brexit? Well, as, as we get closer to it, less and less. You know, the general consensus, it seems to me, <clears throat> whether you are leave or remain, is just, please, please make it stop. Theresa May has tried to make it stop, at least for a while, because the divorce settlement she negotiated with the European Union has been rejected twice by her own parliament. She had to ask that Brexit, which was supposed to happen at the end of this coming week, be delayed. She wanted three months. The EU gave her three weeks. But defeat delayed is not defeat avoided. I'm defending democracy. Two and a half years after the referendum, the country is still split more or less down the middle by those who want to leave. We're not gonna Brexit. And those who voted to stay and say leaving would be even more damaging than they feared. Any suggestion the standoff could be resolved by holding another referendum, still a political long shot, is dismissed by this man, John Curtis, Britain's preeminent public opinion pollster. Opinions, he says, have hardened on both sides. Because we are so polarized, and because we have so many people who either feel very strongly remain or very strongly leave, any fat, any development in the last two and a half years has been interpreted differently. So, if you are a Remainer, yes, you will say, just look at how difficult it is for us to get out of this institution. It's therefore a bad idea. But if a Libra, you say, look how difficult it is to get out of this institution, that just goes to show you why we should get out, because it has far too much influence and involvement in this country's affairs. Funny, huh? Donald Trump got involved. <laughs> I'm surprised at how badly Brexit negotiations have gone. I could have done it much better. Shortly after the referendum, we went up to a pub in the northern English town of Sunderland. It's a town where the only major employer is a car plant where most of the production is exported to Europe, a plant whose future is now in doubt. Yet Sunderland voted 62% to leave the EU. We want it out. And the boys in the pub were happy to explain why. The economy's in the toilet, really. Is that part of the feeling that here people thought, well, you know, there's nothing to lose? That's why people have done what they've done. We went back to Sunderland this past week to see if they'd changed their minds. Some had, but not in the way you might think. I'm really hacked off about it, yeah. Annette had voted to stay in the EU, but is so hacked off, she switched sides and now wants to leave. I don't want to be in a relationship with people who can behave the way they have behaved, because I don't... Yeah, the bullies. Yeah, the bullies. The bullies. Big bullies. Or Gary. If the vote was held again, right now, even more people in Sunderland would probably vote to leave, which... What, out of spite? me. And it's almost willful it, to me. It's almost, well, I would say suicidal, but that, I may be wrong. Anger in the country, anger in Parliament, anger confronting a government minister on the airwaves. Nobody in the country knows what's going on, nobody in there knows what's going on, and you know nothing about what's going on, even inside the Cabinet. The Cabinet is at sea, the country's at sea. We are a laughing stock. Is that a question or just your I'm position? I'm putting it to you. So much for British civility. Maybe it is time for a vacation from Brexit.
Doesn't have to be abroad. Don't want to annoy the Brexiteers. We could just head for the West Country, you know. Jacob Rees-Mogg could lend us one of his counties. <laughs> Jacob Rees-Mogg. This is not Brexit. This is a failure of government policy. It needs to be rejected. Mogg leads a group of the hardest-line Conservative MPs who want to leave the EU now, the so-called cliff-edge Brexit, no matter what the consequences. And he's straight from central casting. He has been described as looking like a, a haunted lamppost. And yeah. he, what's good about him from a comic point of view is that he exactly matches everyone's caricature of a cartoon Englishman. Jacob Rees-Mogg said, This even more vexing news is exceedingly tiresome. <laughs> Clear, though, it seems in your mind of the benefits of Brexit and a hard cliff edge Brexit. Is, is this a process that nobody is controlling right well, now? Well, the, the cliff edge term is not the right one to use. That There's no cliff edge. Steep That's, slope, very it's steep not, slope. It's not a steep slope. A no-deal Brexit would be such an economic shock, almost everyone else agrees, that the government has been practicing using highways as truck parking lots, while goods wait for post-Brexit customs clearance. Imports of foods and medicines would be at risk. To Rhys Mogg, though, the problem isn't Brexit, it's that the Prime Minister doesn't really believe in it. But it was sold as a very simple proposition, in or out, Easiest deal in history, all, the, all those things we've heard, it hasn't turned out that way. Which is not what happens. The government's been utterly supine. Just rolled over to have, wait to have its tummy tickled and, and then licks the hand that had been tickling it. I mean, it's a completely hopeless approach to negotiation. It had no backbone. The referendum was held in the hope it would resolve an issue that had been festering in Britain and particularly in its Conservative Party for decades. Instead, it has stretched the political system and maybe the country's fabled sense of humour to the breaking point. We'll also discuss whether people are longing for the days when politics was dull and the news talked about other things and how nobody predicted that nostalgia for the time before the EU would help lead to a referendum which would lead to nostalgia for a time before the referendum on the EU. My brain's gone. Thank you. <laughs>